They're crazy about you, kid. I sent it's been a look. while since we have you surrounded here. We didn't want to take any chances at all. Thank you. This is... uh... Welcome to a show on paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> These are new. This is great, Phil. You can crawl on this stuff. This is great. Yeah, that's true. Wow. <laughs> Careful. Just a corner. Here we go. Oh, well. All right. Sure, go ahead. Oh, already a Hi. Hi. My mother here, I want her to stand up. She used to watch Mork and Mindy. Yes. And she always, she doesn't know how to pronounce your name because she's from Italy. Well, oh. she's, she's been here for 30 years. But she used to... <laughs> Welcome, benvenuto a New York. Yeah. <laughs> Come va bene, tutto va bene, sì. Grazie. Mi dispiace, scusatemi. She used to call you Nanu Nanu from Mark and Mindy, so I just wanted to introduce her. You want she... me to pronounce that in Italian for her? Sì, sì. Like a Nanu Nanu. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. She's like Italian, scusatemi. Nanu Nanu. She wants me to pronounce Robin Williams in Italian for her. Or Mark. <laughs> so Would Mark, like... Mark. <laughs> We do like a, like the Italian version of Marco, like the New York Italian version of Marco. What you do? Hey! <laughs> hey, take that, Marco! Marco, minde facciolino. Yes, I'm right over here. Yes. <laughs> Where'd you get that tie? You won some prizes. <laughs> Where'd you get the tie? She wants to know. Oh, this is from the Timothy Leary collection. <laughs> this is one of those ties when I used to drink was very convenient. I got it a while ago. Let me just, uh, for those of you who've been living in a cave, uh, Robin, Robin, Robin Williams is 36. Do I have that? 37. But 37. thank you for taking one year off. Uh -huh. But that's that's 100 dog years. Uh, you were um, you were born in Chicago, Illinois. You yes, 1951. Mm -hmm, 1951. Right. Uh, your father was a Ford executive. You probably knew all this. You traveled around. This is a very, uh, had a nice Bloomfield Hills. Sure, basically, yeah. Yeah. Bloomfield oh. Hill. <laughs> then I lived, uh, I lived in basically Lake Forest, Illinois, for a while. I was 16 before I had my first Mercedes. <laughs> I had to work all summer just to go to Europe. Oh. And then uh, Marin County. Marin like, County, yeah. And that was high school. That was high school, yeah. And you actually ran, apparently there was, was it at the uh, uh, men's college, Claremont? Claremont Men's College. Some guy, some teacher actually introduced improvisation as a kind of the of uh, an academic subject. Right. And you were... I took it and flunked all my other subjects. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't seem to be too badly now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been interviewed upside down, sideways, from every way, as, as have uh, all of your relatives. Your mother tells uh, interviewers that you were not a wise guy. No, as a kid. very quiet, um, bordering on catatonic, kind of. <laughs> I was very uh, shy, but we don't have to talk about that now. <laughs> um, uh, for a while, I mean, she used to tell me, I guess I had this image that I was a little fat kid for a while. If anybody here, I'm sorry if nobody offended. But I was like, a, I, I thought of myself as very kind of um, withdrawn until I realized I could perform. <laughs> Some things change! Welcome to Chippendale. <laughs> I want to ask you, um, wh which of your films are you the most proud of? Oh, Garp. Um, oh. <laughs> Hudson? Mato on the Hudson. Um. <laughs> well, the cartoon I did called Deep Bambi. Uh, <laughs> um, I think uh, there's a thing I did for public television called Seize the Day, which was a, a drama. Good Morning Vietnam. This one, uh, all different things. You uh, trained at Juilliard here in uh, New York City, and your classmates included Chris Reeve, Mandy Potamkin, and who? Bill uh, Hurt. Bill Hurt was in your yeah, class? Patty, no, it wasn't in my class. He was, it was a weird thing. I started off, I was an advanced student, which was like a two-year program, and then in one year, it was a class of 25, and I think 23 left. <laughs> so it's basically you're doing a lot of just two-person scenes after that. Are you really a romantic when you're alone with your lover? Oh, that's, that's the question I was going to ask. You, know? you took it right out of my mouth. You know, uh, I'm, darling, I'm a romantic when I'm alone with myself. I... <laughs> <laughs> no. 
What you did like for you? Shut up. I... That'll make you see if that makes the air. <laughs> no, am I always joking? Well, it's difficult for a comic to. If you're a comedian, it's that's the hard part. Sometimes if to drop that, sometimes not want to go. Ah! No. <laughs> oh, look, look a chicken. But that's something that you, yeah, to drop that, yeah, I have to. You have to kind of do other things. Now, you, you are honest to tell us that there is a natural high outside of the one that you and I might... What are you talking about, Phil? Um, <laughs> you mean about performing and... Yeah, when well, you're out there and... Oh, it is amazing. Especially when you find a new idea, when you find something that... It involves a little bit in creating. When you find something, if you get a suggestion or if you create a character... There's been times when I find, uh, the other night I was on stage and I found a new idea, and it, it's something, it's amazing. There is a drug. It's some sort of, mm -hmm. it's beyond endorphins, which is what you get when you run long distances, which is why marathon runners always look that kind of, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that is a natural high. It is. Now, uh, you also, um, you make your way to various comedy stores type, uh, yeah. and you walk in and you may get up, huh? Sometimes, sometimes, and uh, sometimes sheer fear will do it. Uh, Sometimes it'll be I, uh, like doing, you know, talking about the news. We can talk. Dan Quayle, it's pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it, Dan? <laughs> Where's the big hand, Dan? Uh, well, Nancy and I are... I wonder what it would be like growing up in a house with you, with your uh, mother and father and your sisters and brother. You must have had one heck of a time. Well, well I had, one since I had terrific sisters guy. and brothers, it was a... Uh, there's a line for that, too. I just played with myself, but I, I just had my, you know, that's where the, some of the imagination came from, just growing up. My mother's very, very funny. I was, he's talking about her, so hey. She's, uh, she used to, her first joke was, uh, she used to read this poem to me when I was about six. I love you in blue, I love you in red, but most of all, I love you in blue. <laughs> and at the time, I'm going, there's something wrong with that, Mom. <laughs> But uh, it was amazing. My father was a different type of humor. He was very dry, very, a very wonderful man, very, and had a great way of dropping his voice that would really scare me. But a very, I think uh, he gave me the other side, which is what this movie has to deal with, that kind of that ethical, I know he had a very great sense of power about him. Did you discover your humor when you discovered girls? Was it about the same thing that uh, flowered? <laughs> <laughs> Should we do the puppet show now? Uh, no, it came about the same time. It was, uh, it happened in a little bit in high school, but the first year of college from those classes when I really started to uh, so you explore weren't, it. You weren't a wise guy in high school. Then. No. A very good student, as a matter of fact. Yeah, cum laude society, the whole number, and the president of the class. and Most likely to succeed. It. I think it's actually said that, didn't it? In your no, it said least likely to succeed, but most interesting to do something. Oh, I see. It's kind of, it would be... It was like very strange because I was going to study political science. That's why I went to that the Claremont Men's College to study political science and economics. And after two weeks of improvisational theater classes, I uh, didn't do too well in the economics mm. class. <laughs> Be strange to think of me now in an embassy going, <laughs> "I'm kidding, put the gun down." No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, difficult. Uh, so your first laugh, then, and it's sort of in a in a theatrical sense, was not till you were a freshman in college. Yeah, basically a performing laugh. I mean, it sounds like. And then I remember, uh -huh. uh, there was this time. Yeah, I think that was the first time of really performing live for people, other than my mother. But, you know. And you liked it and said, uh, oh, yeah. maybe I can make a living doing this. Yes. I wanted to ask how your son was. He's wonderful. How old is he? Oh, oh Mr. Hinckley's here. we got to go. <laughs> hey, we're having a show on automatic weapons. You be the judge. <laughs> I think we need them. You know, as a hunter, you never know when you're going to run across a deer with a 38. <laughs> Yeah. He's doing wonderful, though. He's, he's in great... He's six. It's a, it's a great time because he's just learning to read. You know, it's where if he finds one of the old books, like, what's this book? That's uh, something by D.H. Lawrence. Give me that. <laughs> you know, he's, it's an amazing time because for him, you, you can see a personality forming and transforming and learning. I mean, he's, besides his reading, and the other day we had a discussion on degrees of infinity, <laughs> <laughs> which is a great way. Good night. Well, thank you. Other degrees of infinity? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't finish college. <laughs>
I was wondering why you didn't uh, use your real name in Baron von Munchausen. Because at the time I was worried uh, Terry, the people who were producing it, were after his house. So I was a little worried that they might be a little abusive of the privilege of using the name. It's, especially when you're coming off a movie like Good Morning Vietnam, you have to be careful of how they'll promote it. And now it's just a cameo. It's five minutes. And I want to be very protective of that. Oh, it was fun. It was a great time to do it. That's a very unusual fairy tale, you know. The Wizard of Oz staged by the Marquis de Sade, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't be afraid. I just want to ask you, are you married now? Are you involved with anybody? Yes. I'm very married now. <laughs> and very married. pregnant. Two months. Yeah, two I'm months. sorry, I stepped on you. Oh, mind. sorry. You said you had a son? Yes. How old is he? He's six. Six? Six years old. Yes. Yeah, and I'm about to have another baby. Not me personally, but... <laughs> but the second one... It tastes like sea monkeys, but a lot different. You know? Have you been to Moscow, and how did you prepare for that particular role? Uh, no, I didn't get to go to Moscow, and there's really not much chance to let me for a while. We really enjoyed that movie. We run it backwards so it has happy endings. <laughs> it's like, uh, how did I prepare? I studied Russian for three months. I, I played saxophone for three months, but at the end, I still sounded like a, a whale. But <laughs> it was like even so bad, the musician was going, that's, that's close, let's stop now. But the Russian was most amazing. Learning to speak Russian, I love, because it's an amazingly beautiful language. It has a, you know, quite... Uh, Robin, I wanted to ask you, who was your idol when you were starting out? Uh, uh, flat out, Jonathan Winters, more than anybody. How did you get involved in your new film? What inspired you to do it? The script, reading it and basically loving in the whole piece. Uh, not just the fact my character, but the ensemble. And they're here today, but we'll talk. People, all these, just the whole thing, I love the story of it, and I love the fact that it is an ensemble, that it wasn't just my character, but some wonderful characters in it also, and that the whole arc of it, it's like a line from Garp. You okay there? <laughs> Welcome to San Francisco! <laughs> that I found the arc of the character, and, and the whole story, quite moving and quite powerful, I found myself sobbing on a plane. And it's difficult when you're having the people walking going, oh, something's wrong with him. <laughs> but it's a very powerful story to me. It is a powerful story. It is titled Dead Poet Society. You may have read uh, uh, the publicity about this uh, picture. It's considerable. Here comes Robin Williams as a professor in a, uh, in a uh, Vermont college, New Hampshire. No. Where was I don't think we even know. It's in, well, it's in New England somewhere. Oh, New England. Well, that's it. Uh, uh, Picture a man going on a journey beyond sight and sound. <laughs> Uh, the private boys' school, uh, you know, preparatory school. This is quite a uh, performance for uh, Mr. Williams, who presents as a uh, rather unorthodox uh, teacher to a group of uh, the kind of guys you would find at a mostly New England yeah, uh, boys' school, preparatory school. Here's a scene. Uh, here's his introduction to uh, great books, literature, poetry, and art. Roll this film. Excrement. That's what I think of Mr. J. Evans Pritchard. We're not laying pipe. We're talking about poetry. How can you describe poetry like American bandstand? Well, I like Byron. I give him a 42, but I can't dance to it. <laughs> now, I want you to rip out that page. Go on. Rip out the entire page. You hear me? Rip it out. Rip it out! Go on. Rip it out! Thank you, Mr. Dalton. Oh. Gentlemen, tell you what, not just tear out that page, tear out the entire introduction. I want it gone. History, leave nothing of it. Rip it out. Rip. Be gone, J. Evans Pritchard, PhD. Rip, shred, tear, rip it out. I want to hear nothing but ripping of Mr. Pritchard. We'll perforate it, put it on a roll. Uh -huh. Well, guess who else is here? The ensemble about uh, whom you spoke a moment ago. These young uh, actors deliver in this film. I ought to know, I saw it. Here are Josh Charles, Ethan Hawke, Robert Sean Leonard, Gail Hansen, Dylan Cussman, and Alalan Ruggiero. Would you kindly stand and say hello to these folks? Here? Root 
Ruggiero. I'm the last. Uh, yeah. I'm the last talk show host that's going to yeah, mispronounce his name. Uh, Ruggiero. Uh, just, I want to get this uh, line up here. Boy, I'll tell you something. I, this, uh, you are serious about your work. Um, you're how old? I'm 17. Uh-huh. And you're in the movies. Yep. And this happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, uh, Summer Stalker, how'd this happen? I mean, where did you... I started when I was about eight years old doing stand-up around Baltimore, and uh, that sort of got you, me real. You got had me. to get serious. You went somewhere, did you? Yeah, I went to a, a, a place in upstate New York called Stage Door Manor Performing Arts Training Center, which is like a theater camp. I went there for five summers, and uh-huh. I just did a bunch of plays there and really got me into it. Uh-huh. You are Ethan. Right. And you're how old? 18. 18. <gasps> And uh, and your and your rise to stardom. I let, tell them because after all, we got more than a few folks out there. Would love to have your job. How, <laughs> how did this happen? I, um, At such an early age. I uh, started in the lottery. You know, I bought a ticket and um, I gave it. And before too long, I had to park. He tried to be funny, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, you I went, I did them. Did um, you do summer stock? Did you work? Yeah, I did theater in around my town and uh, did a did a bunch of work. And, uh-huh. Just came about. And the phone rang, and here you are. Yeah. And here is the highly regarded Robert Sean Leonard. You are Neil Perry in this. You are a talented and tortured animal in this film, and you are, and you do, you do deliver a very important performance uh, to the uh, script. And your start, and how old are you? Twenty. Twenty. Well, an old guy. And you? Yeah. Uh-huh. And did you do summer stock? Or really? yeah, I've been, I did summer stock for three years, starting when I was twelve, and uh, I've been working in New York for. Five yeah. years since then. Uh, he's really boring on the set, isn't he, Robin? Robin, yeah, he's a real drag to have around. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks uh, very much, uh, Robert. And you're uh, Gail. And you're uh, you're what? You're the old guy in this group? Yeah, I'm, I'm the uh, grandpa in this group. Uh, I'm in my twenties, Phil. You're in your twenties. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, did you come up through summer stock, or did you go uh, to? Sc- actually, no. I think um, I think you could best describe me as a uh, studio rat. I've been studying with uh, most of the historically prominent uh, acting teachers in New York. Really? Stella Adler, uh, nice. Sandy Meisner, Uta mm-hmm. Hagen. Yeah. And here is uh, Dylan Cussman. Sir. Cameron, you, thinks out, you think out on this. Group. I think out in a major way, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, uh-huh. I blow it. And uh, the phone rang and somebody said, you want to be in a film with Robin Williams? Uh, you know, well, how long have you had an agent? <laughs> well, you know, uh, Pete. <laughs> That's what we call him on the set, Peter Ware. Uh, he gave me a call and said, uh, you know, I was wondering if you'd like to do my film. <laughs> you know, so, and he me. knew about you because? No, I, 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 uh, they, they, this thing had gone before, and, and they had test tapes from before the... Uh, I see. They, uh, did you have to make a screen test for the film? Yeah, we did. We did. We did. All right, Red. <laughs> we're, we're down to your Ruggiero. That's How am I doing? That's right. Okay. Uh, and your rise to stardom? Um... Uh, well, what about it, man? Yeah. <laughs> it hasn't occurred yet. <laughs> Did you? Hey, man. I love you. Uh, what have you done before the film? I mean, uh, just a lot of theater at uh, in a performing arts school in Philadelphia. Really? Yeah. And uh, that's... This, one, this must be very exciting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, well, I'm here to uh, support you in a big way. I thought your performances were significantly wonderful. And uh, Robin, as your teacher, this is, a, this is an afternoon or an evening at the movies. I'm pleased to recommend it. And I'm glad you came and made us look like a big act here. We'll be back with Robin Williams in just a minute. <laughs> Hey, this is not a test. This is rock and roll. Time to rock it from the Delta to the DMZ. Is that me or does that sound like an Elvis Presley movie? Viva Da Nang. Oh, Viva Da Nang. Da Nang me, Da Nang me. Why don't they get a rope and hang me? Hey, it's a little too early for being that loud. Hey, too late. It's 0600. What's the O stand for? Oh, my God, it's early. Speaking of early, how about that Crow Magnon, Marty Drywood? Thank you, Marty, for silky smooth sound. Make me sound like Peggy Lee. Good morning, Vietnam. What the heck is that supposed to mean? Uh-huh. Well, 
these young men here gathered to enjoy uh, con conversing with Robin Williams will be pleased to know that there is a woman in Dead Poets Society. <laughs> Alexandra Power. We knocked them out, too. Boy, are you gorgeous in this film, and we are not surprised. Uh, there's no uh, camera trickery here. All right, Alexandra, it was fun, and it took a couple of months, and you had the time of your life with uh, this whole crowd, huh? With the boys? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And you kept your eye on them? <laughs> oh, yeah. Please forgive this, uh, this intrusion in your privacy, but we do, we are curious to know how a young woman gets herself into a big film like this. Uh, obviously, your talent, but so are a lot of other people. Did you study? Did you? Are you you're um, from Los Angeles. I'm from Los Angeles, and um, I tested as some of the boys did also the first time around uh -huh. a year and a half ago. And Peter Weir had seen my original test, uh -huh. and luck and God. And uh -huh. you say uh, he had seen your original test. You got to be. You decided uh, when you were a little well, girl you wanted to be a, a movie star, huh? Yeah. When I was, <laughs> yeah. Well, my mother's a writer, and she she had written for Kung Fu. So I, ever since I went to the set of Kung Fu when I was six, I wanted to be like David Carradine. <laughs> well, I'm not exactly like him, but I wanted to to act. Uh -huh. and, uh, so you grew up in this environment. Yeah. You must be very excited. Very excited. Well, you should be proud, too. And thanks for stopping by. Robin, Robin, you're so successful now. Is there anything you haven't done yet that you'd really like to do? Yeah, that's good. A talk show. Don't give me. Oh, God. I, no, a talk show would be one. Um, game show, another. Yeah. Flown my own plane. I want to be in my talk should be interesting. Robin Williams, we're talking to male lesbians. We'll be right back. <laughs> Men who like women, why? We'll be right back. Back in a moment. May I ask where you would uh, like your permanent residence, and how do you like New York? No, no, you can't ask those questions. No. <laughs> yeah, good luck to you, Mr. Donahue. Hello. I live in San Francisco. That's always where I've lived and probably will be there until if there is the big one. Then I'll surf to Wyoming. <laughs> but I, um, how do I like living? New York is always amazing for me because New York always peels away any pretensions when you start to think yourself really like, I am something. Like the other day I was walking in New York. I guess I didn't wave at somebody. And the guy leaned out of his car and went, no wonder you didn't win the Oscar. <laughs> Who's your favorite actor York. and actress? Who's what? Who's your favorite actor and actress? Favorite actor or and actress? Actor? Oh God! God, living alive right now? Oh, there's many. I, uh, Robert Sean Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> the boys are holding up names. I love uh, I've Dustin Hoffman just for character things. Uh, Jack Nicholson just for just for being Jack. <laughs> and then there's uh, there's a lot of English actors I think are amazing. Bob Hoskins and there's an uh, English character actor. I mean there's also Olivier. That's in a category all by itself. Um, Over here. Oh, sorry. Uh, what did you like about playing the teacher in this new movie? I like the fact that it, it was different for me to taking the turn of not having to always be funny, but yet still, still having wit and passion. But it didn't. It didn't have to be. It was. It's the power of ideas. That's what I love about it. That thought can make a point without having to have a lot of spin on it. And you were. You took these kids out of a out of a rut. Yeah. That there is. In the parallel, in the sense of it's 1959, it's kind of a complacent time. It's also a time when they were being geared up. If, if anyone's ever been to a prep school, I mean, I was geared up. They were geared to get into college. That was basically it. It's, you have to get to go that way, these Ivy League schools that way. And it's to try and get that there is something more than just that. And there's something that you can take from, especially something like poetry and something like literature. To, there is a reason. There's a speech where you basically talk about, we don't read poetry because it's cute. But it's because it has passion in life. And because it, it comes from truth and it's something we do that must be done. Like great art, it has to be done. People who are great painters and stuff, they do it like Van Gogh. If he's ripping his ear off, it's still going, but they are still turtle paint. You know? <laughs> we heard your wife is pregnant. When is she due? July 23rd or maybe my birthday the 21st, which would be amazing. And now, where is she buying the furniture from? <laughs> <laughs> do you have a card? Yes. A lady. <laughs> That's why I baby furniture, dude. Everybody's got a card. It's like, hold on, and Mr. Williams, don't go away. You need anything. Uh, it's a funeral home, not yet, but just in case. 
Just in case you want a box, it's got a water bed, anything you want in there. That's amazing. Robin, speaking of your new wife, so how's the marriage? Wonderful. It's amazing. It's amazing to be married. It's amazing to be expecting a child. To be expecting a child again is a wonderful thing. People think you have it together this time. You know, I have a son before. Was it any more that you have it together? No, I'm still like, it's, it's a wonderful combination of delight and terror at the same time. Of knowing that you think that day, the day it happens, you know, the beeper goes off, I have to leave the set, I come home, everything okay? And you walk in the door like, I've got it. Good, the body, the baby. Get the car, the car, the car, the car, the car. Gotta get the car, the car, the car, the car. That's, it's an amazing time. It's, it's also wonderful to see and just, she's a tiny woman, and this, and this is gonna be one giant baby. <laughs> this is, just like, this is gonna be like in the Hindenburg or the Holland Tunnel, baby. <laughs> That's not a pretty picture, but one I had to use. It's going to be a heavy duty process. I've seen this kid move. This kid not only moves, it does spins, you know. It's difficult to see. Normally, sometimes you see the stomach go like this. I'm seeing like... <laughs> Someone's putting up paintings. I don't know. This will go here. I don't know. The umbilical. I don't know. But I... That kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Robin. Uh, I was wondering who your favorite Bay, Bay Area rock and roll band would be. Oh, God. Huey Lewis. I mean, uh, there's a lot of great rock and roll bands that are like club bands that are incredible. <laughs> and I go blank right now because I haven't been home in a couple of months. Um, God, I'm trying to think. Um, Starship. Yeah, we know that. People are helping me now. <laughs> Over here, Rob. I mean, there's so many club bands I've seen because in the comedy clubs are usually next door to rock and roll clubs. There's a great place called... Uh, oops, I'll tell um, you in a moment. I go to school in Berkeley, and I'm wondering if you think from Dead Poets Society that academic schools tend to stifle creativity. I went to Juilliard, which is a combination academic and creative school, which is a hard thing to, you know, sometimes to acknowledge. You know, they acknowledge creativity, but sometimes acknowledging the real world, too. That's a hard one. Academic schools like Berkeley for stifling creativity, you think? No. <laughs> Say it ain't so. <laughs> I think that they can, there can be a combination of it. I mean, of academic and the creative. I mean, it's just like classically trained artists. I mean, I went to a, the idea of Juilliard was to train you as a classical actor. And then, so you can do anything. If you can pull off Shakespeare, you can do a beer commercial. <laughs> and if you can pull off both at the same time, you are basically saying light beer, a beer for the 80s. Yeah. Be not afraid, no it's steel, and the foam that comes from within. <laughs> and we'll be back in just a moment. How are you? <laughs> Hi. In your movies, how many... Uh, what percentage of your part is ad-libbed and what percentage is written for you? Oh. Uh, let's bring out the improv meter. I don't know, with this one it's not as much because um, it wouldn't hold it. We tried sometimes to kind of push the envelope with this movie and it didn't hold, it didn't work. It, it came off looking like a performance rather than teaching. I mean, there's still times when a teacher will be funny, but it was important that it still... Trying to get an right. idea across. This is not uh, overdone, but the um, irrepressible uh, Brother Williams is not altogether uh, <laughs> kept from himself in this film, but there's only flashes of it. This is a very disciplined performance, may I say. I don't want to patronize anybody. Also, may I say, a very entertaining one. Here's, here's uh, the teacher. Here's the uh, teacher at the uh, preparatory school. Uh, you might recognize Robin Williams in this brief excerpt. Roll this film. Many of you have seen Shakespeare done very much like this. Oh, Titus, bring your friend hither. <laughs> but if any of you have seen Mr. Marlon Brando, no, that Shakespeare can be different. France, Romans, countrymen, <laughs> let me rest. <laughs> you can also imagine maybe John Wayne is Macbeth going, well, is this a dagger I see before me? Yeah, hi. What role do you consider most representational of your own personality? Different things. This one represents more of, a, of my own philosophy. Good Morning Vietnam represents more of my persona, just the fact of that the two sides of it, performing and non-performing. And an HBO represents <laughs> the darker side. <laughs> yeah. The psyche that comes out. But that, um, of those three, that's what represents me. Yes, sir. Robin, you're such a fantastic talent. What are you doing to keep yourself in shape so you can be around a long time like Milton Berle and, and George Burns? 
Well, occasionally I have a nice piece of corned beef. <laughs> a little piece of chicken, but not that well done. I run long distances. Uh, I've been, I uh, like in New York, running in the park. It's like running, uh, I run the river sometimes. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, uh, for me, running is the only time. It's great. When you run in New York, people, it's a trip. You run in the park, people recognize you. Even people, it's, you, you'll be running, and all of a sudden people go, oh, I'm not going to let him pass me. <laughs> But it's the only time I can really get, it's, like, it's my peaceful time, even though it's like running long distances. It's a great time, because you can still check out the world, but it's, it's too late. Even if they recognize you, it's like, no, nah, I ain't him. <laughs> it's a quick time. Hi. Um, since you've done series TV with Mork and Mindy, and then you've gone to movies, would you like to go back to series TV, or stay with the movies? I would go back to series, you mean? Series. Ser series. Oh, series. Oh, I thought series, series TV. Like a TV series. Yeah. Yeah. As the world burns, a soap opera. <laughs> Um, I would go back if it was a, an ensemble piece, if it was, if it was something really, really interesting. I mean, I don't out, you know, put that out of bounds. TV is hard, obviously. You're putting it out every week is a whole other bag. It's a different thing. It takes, it sucks up stuff so quick, and you have to really be on top of it. And uh, that type of work, it's, it's really, you have to be ready for that. Hi. Hi. Welcome to New York. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering... You've done a lovely job with it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But I, I want to see more plants. We'll work on it. I was just wondering, do you prefer acting to stand-up live uh, comedy both. shows? They both feed each other. Mm -hmm. They both survive off each other. Six, four. They both, you know, stand-up comedy is such a great release. It, it's, it's almost like energy, and then the other one is like, uh, it's refined energy. It's the difference between a laser and a searchlight. You know, stand-up comedy for me is just total freedom. It's all full out. I can do anything. It's a freedom to go from one subject to the other and not have any bounds. <laughs> Acting is a very disciplined thing, so you can take that same energy out here and just refine it and really use it for something interesting, like with this movie, which is like really focused and very intense, but it goes to a point, and the point is to, you know, once again, creativity, thought, passion, love, simple things. <laughs> you talked about uh, how wide-ranging you can be in, uh, in a solo performance. Uh, and on your HBO special, you are. You can get politically uh, funny, heavy, savvy, inside. Here is your riff on none other than P.W. Boda. Roll the tape. <laughs> Prime Minister Botho, white courtesy phone. Prime Minister Botho, white courtesy phone. <laughs> Strange thing. South Africa's getting to the point where even Lester Maddox is going to have to go over there and go, Excuse me, Mr. Botha, can I talk to you for a moment? <laughs> George, what do you think? <laughs> okay, come on. Mr. Botha? Mr. Botha, can I explain something to your... Let me show you the odds here, Sparky. There's 14 million black people. There's 3 million white people. Now, does the name Custer mean anything to you? I think you and we'll be back with Robin Williams in just a moment.